So we are going to start the class today and today we are going to start on the solar system. So um, can everyone see my screen? Yes, I can yes. see your screen. Okay, so the solar system, let's get straight into it. Now, let's start off with the planets. They have two, there are two different types of planets in our solar system and they're classified and we give them names based on what they're made out of. So we have the rocky planets and the gas giants. I'm gonna explain more now. So the rocky planets, these are typically made of rock and, do, and we know them as Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Um, they tend to have a very rocky outer layer, and, but the inner parts, the core areas, they tend to be upwards of 1,000 degrees Celsius. These inner areas are mostly made of molten rock and metal, and because of that, some of them have a magnetic field, whereas Venus and Mars do not. This has to do with the way the core behaves, and I'll get more into that later. But suffice it to say that as of now, only a couple have um, only a couple have magnetic fields. Now onto the gas giants. They are a lot bigger than the rocky planets by a massive margin, to put it simply. For example, if we take Jupiter, the biggest of all the gas giants, it's big enough to fit at least a thousand earths inside it that's how big it is the so yeah and jupiter saturn uranus and neptune that's those are the four gas giants they are most they're mostly composed of gases but those gases aren't in, ga in gaseous state only so does everyone knows about the three states of matter right solid liquid and gas yes yeah. Yeah. Now, most of the most of the most of the um, gas giants, they contain liquid. The, so most of the gases in them are actually in a liquid state. So the average temperature is lower than two hundred is lower than negative two hundred degrees Celsius in each one. So you can expect to see liquid forms of gases like methane and oxygen, just as an example. Okay. And, and the gas giants typically have more than one moon at minimum, and all of them have their own ring system like Saturn. Um, so yeah, all of them have their own ring system. It's just that Saturn's is the most um, prominent, shall we say. Now then, the other part of the solar system, another one at least, is the asteroid belt. So this is located in between Mars and Jupiter's orbit, which, and it's just, to put it simply, it's just a collection of rocks in space that orbit the sun. And, in and if we're talking about in terms of the universe, they're very small, um, typically, they're typically around a mile or so long, but all of them are smaller than the planets. That's why they're known as asteroids. Some escape the asteroid belt and go into other areas of the solar system, but that's a very rare occurrence. And in general, this is a rather boring area of the solar system. Okay. The Kuiper belt, can, you can think of this as a secondary asteroid belt. It orbits the sun beyond Neptune. And because of that, everything beyond Neptune's orbit, sorry. And because of that, if most of the orbits, most of the objects, sorry, in Neptune's in the Kuiper belt are referred to as trans-Neptunian objects because they lie beyond Neptune. Pluto is part of them as it's not classified as a planet yet. And some comets with very short orbits or short time um, comets, they all come from the Kuiper belt. Now these comets and pretty much everything in the Kuiper belt they're just leftovers from the early days of the solar system, from when the solar system formed, basically. And lastly, there is the Oort cloud. It's pronounced Oort. But nobody knows whether or not this exists for certain. So this is a small, this is a theoretical region of the solar system that lies beyond the Kuiper belt. It lies...
So it lies one light year. So I'll just go over this once I'm done real quick. Um, I apologize if I'm going a bit too fast. So the Oort cloud is theorized, is theorized to be one light year or 100,000 astronomical units away from the sun. Um, AU stands for astronomical unit, which I will, t which is spelt like, um, if you will just give me a minute. Everyone refer to the chat. So that is what it is. It's that's an astronaut. Yes. Now, um, I'll go over everything one more time because I feel like I may have lost you and it's not mm -hmm. point. Only because it's... Um, uh, hello, Naveen? Can yeah. you hear me? Okay. So, yeah. The Oort cloud, it's theoretically supposed to be the remains of the disk that formed the sun. So, to recap... Uh, Sorry about that. So to recap, we have two different types of planets in the solar system. Rocky planets, which are usually made of, um, which are made of rock and the inner parts of them are molten rock and molten metal that can tend to reach temperatures of upwards of 1000 degrees Celsius and some possess a magnetic field. Keep in mind that- Molten not... rock, it means, is, is it made of magma? Yes, that is the term for molten rock, yes. So, the, yeah, the inner parts of most of all the um, rocky planets are magma I and molten know. metal. So keep in mind though, Venus and Mars do not have a magnetic field, only Earth and Mercury does. And moving on to the gas giants, these are much bigger than, uh, than the rocky plants by a big margin. You can see in this background picture here, Earth uh, is tiny compared to Jupiter and Saturn. They are mostly composed of gas, but most of the gas that we think of as in Earth, that, that is mostly in a liquid state. That's a bit confusing. So what I mean is, on Earth, what makes up the gas giants would be gases. Hence, we call them gas giants even though in the planets themselves, they're liquid. Does everyone understand? Yeah, makes sense. Okay, um, Dita is okay with it. Does everyone else understand? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, good. So, um, now these gas giants have a small core of rock that may not be much bigger than Earth in this picture or might even be smaller than Earth. That's just to give the liquid something to like adhere to, if you will, something to stick on. And they have many moons, all of them. They all have more than one moon and all of them have their own ring system. So all of them have rings like Saturn. Ring system means? Um, so, you, so you see how Saturn has it, it's a massive ring? Yeah. Yeah so, yeah, so each one of the gas giant has their own ring. It's just, it's not as visible as Saturn's. Okay. Hello. Uh, hello, Arnav, did you have a question? Yeah. Um, go on. Uh, you told us that uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are the gaseous planets. Yes. So, uh, if some astronaut, suppose, goes on that, so he can't stand, no? Um, you're right about that. No, there is no surface, per se, in, um, on each of these planets. So, we, have, we don't plan on traveling to these planets yet. We're currently stuck on trying to get to Mars. But in case if someone goes there, they 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 just uh, jump into that planet. They they like come out of it, or like since it's made of gas, or they'll get stuck there. Well, I mean, if they were to try and jump 
into the planets themselves, they'd most likely be squished into a paste because they because the gravity on each of these planets. Yeah, it's it's a bit disturbing, but to put it simply, um, hello. Yeah. Okay, so the plan the gravity on these planets because they're bigger than Earth. The gravity, they, uh, their gravity is much stronger. So anybody who tries to enter these planets would be squished to a pulp because the gravity is so strong. Okay. That's why they Whereas hold outside their... the planet, it's, it's just zero gravity. Yeah. And in zero gravity, okay. there are much more harmful effects, actually. But I'm, okay. I'll explain those in a later class. But suffice it to say that if we want to explore these planets, we need a different spaceship. But okay. yeah, so just to recap, they have rings and they have a lot of moons and their core temp and their temperatures are generally lower than negative 200 degrees Celsius. Now, um, some interesting facts I think I ought to mention. So Jupiter has, has the great red spot. Everyone knows what it is, right? The big yeah, red you spot. you explained it last class. Last yeah. class you explained about it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Now... Now you know about those, and you know everything you need to know about them. So yeah, moving on. Um, asteroid belt, fairly unremarkable. If you guys want to read it, feel free. But all you really need to know is that it's just a collection of space rocks that orbit the sun. There remains from the early days of the solar system, and that's really everything we need to know. I'll explain about the sun in the next class, OK? So, Kuiper Belt. It's just um, a bunch of objects that orbit the sun beyond Neptune's orbit. Because they orbit the sun beyond Neptune's orbit, they're referred to as trans-Neptunian objects, and Pluto is part of them. So, did you guys know that Pluto was once a planet? Yeah, he was. Yeah. And then yeah, now, now, now they're considering him as a dwarf planet. Yes, there are two reasons for that. One, if you will see in this di diagram in the background, the orbit, yeah. which is represented in yellow, it's very wonky, yeah. shall we say. So is it because Pluto's orbit wasn't elliptical? It was not, no, it technically is elliptical. But if you look at this background here, you can see that the yellow line, which is Pluto's orbit, and this pink line here, or whatever color that is, white, that's Neptune's orbit. So Pluto's orbit is very wonky when compared to Neptune's. All the planets which are, which are on the same plane of orbit, whereas Pluto is wonky, shall we say. So that's one reason. And another reason is, I don't know how many of you know this, but in two places, Pluto's orbit actually goes through Neptune's orbit. Did everyone know that? No. Yeah. yeah. No. Yes. Yeah, Pluto's orbit goes through Neptune's or orbit. And that's what the second reason why it isn't considered a planet anymore. They consider it a dwarf planet because of its size. But because of those two factors, the rather wonky orbit and the unimpressive, shall we, and the fact that it crosses through Neptune's orbit, it's no longer classified as a um, planet. It's a dwarf planet now. But and, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, does Pluto's uh, orbit now also in yep. intersect the uh, Neptune's orbit? Yes, it does. For No matter what, Pluto's orbit will always be like this. It can't change because that's just the way it goes around the sun. So despite its orbit being elliptical, it will always remain like this. So yeah, it can't change if you understand what I mean. Anyway, our next, next is the Oort cloud. Now just remember that this is all theoretical, meaning that the Oort cloud may not exist in the first place. So the Oort cloud, this is theorized. Um, Naveen, if you're gonna... uh, Naveen, if you're going to be speaking to someone else, please um, mute yourself before you do. It's a little distracting. Um, anyway, okay, so, sorry. No problem. Uh, so the Oort cloud, 
it's, it's, remember, this is theoretical, meaning that this may not exist. We have no proof, but we have some evidence. So it's theoretically supposed to be a region of the solar system well beyond the Kuiper belt. It's, it's about one light year away from the sun, or that's roughly 100,000 astronomical units away from the sun. Now, most long period comets, comets that have a very long orbit time, are theorized to be from this region. Some comets have an orbit of 72,000 years. That, those comets are theorized to be from this area. And this is also theorized to be the remains of the disk that formed the sun. That I'll explain in the next class as well. So, um, yeah. But I have a doubt. Go you on. said that word cloud may not exist. So how can you, how can we like have an evidence or say that um, the long period comets come from here? See, look, the thing is, we need to give an answer to something because these comets are clearly part of our solar system. That's been proven by multiple scientific, like by satellites that flew near the, uh, those comets, okay? So there is proof that these comets are from our solar system. It's just, we, we just don't know from where. So the Oort cloud is a sort of answer to that, if you will. And there's evidence to say that it is there, but, but the evidence can mean something else as well. So there is no proof for it yet. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. So once we have conclusive proof, like once it's visually seen somewhere, then it will no longer be a theory. It will be just a fact. Anyway, I think I've bored you enough. I'm going to quiz you now. There are 10 questions to this quiz. And for the first question, you have to use the chat. So what are the two types of planets in our solar system? You have, you'll have to type your answer in a private chat to me. Does everyone know how to do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I am waiting on your answers. <coughs> I apologize for that. Um, good job, Ditya, Arnav, you guys are correct. Uh, Varnika, you're correct. Nishka, you are correct. Aaron, you are correct. Um, Shitij, wait, how do you pronounce your name? I apologize. Shitij. Shitij, you are correct. Is there anyone else who needs to answer? Okay. okay, so I'm going to reveal the answer now. So the correct answer are the rocky planets and the gas giants. Most of us got that, so good job. Right, question two. Thanks. Which of these four rocky planets have a magnetic field? Pluto, Mercury, Venus, or Mars? Type your answer in a private chat to me. Yes, Dita, you are correct. Yes, Tristi, you are correct. Nishka, you are correct. Uh, Barnika, you are wrong. Uh, Aaron, you are wrong. Uh, Naveen, you are wrong. Um, okay, I'm just going to wait for everyone else before I reveal the answer. Mars? Is it Mars? Nope, not much. I can't tell you. Okay. Three, two, one. It's Mercury. Remember, Venus and Mars do not possess a magnetic field. Do not. Mercury and Earth do. 
Question three, what is in the core of the rocky planets? A, rocks, oh, sorry, magma, B, rocks, C, metal, or D, precious minerals? A, magma. Okay, um, Arnav, refrain from shouting out your answer. Please type it in the private chat, but... C, metals. Uh, Priya, you're wrong. Okay, I'm going to wait 10 seconds. Okay, so everyone who said magma, you are correct. Yes, Arnav, it is magma. Question four. What are the... What, what temperature are the gases in the gas giants? I'm not going to read out the answers. So. Um, everyone who wants to, well, private chat, please. Arun, you are correct. C minus 100 degrees. Um, to whoever said option C, check your answer again. Um, Naveen, yeah, please check your answer again. Deetia, you are correct. Shetij, you are correct. Um, you guys can just use the letters for the record. Naveen, you are correct. So I am waiting on some other people, unless everyone else is on. Okay, three. Uh, Nishka, you are correct. Three, two, one. Time's up. The answer is lower than or equal to negative 200 degrees. This is the temperature at which most gases turn into liquids. Question five. How many of the gas giants have ring systems? Uh, private chat, type your answer. Um, Shetej, Nishka, Arin, you guys are correct. Naveen, you are correct. Um, Ditya, please check your answer again. Priya, please check your answer again. Uh, Ditya, check your answer again. Um, Priya, please check your answer again. Parnika, you are correct. Um, Priya, you are correct. Arnav, you are correct. Thanks. Uh, no, Ditya, it's not three. The answer is four. All of them have a ring system. Now, if you guys can see my screen, you will see that. Now, Jupiter's is actually the least visible. The, uh, no, yeah. yeah, so you, the rings are not much bigger than Jupiter's moons, hence why you can barely see them. Um, Uranus is, well, sideways, as you can see in this picture. Neptune and Saturn is like this. Question six, where is the asteroid belt? Go ahead. Did we? Uh, she said you are correct. Yeah. Dita, you are correct. Arun, you are correct. Naveen, you are correct. Wait, sorry, uh, Naveen, please check your answer again. I, uh, I read your answer wrong. Arnav, you are correct. Yes, Nishka, you are correct. Uh, Parnika, please check your answer again. Uh, yes, Naveen, that's the right answer. Sorry for confusing you. Fine. Okay, so I will reveal the answer in three, two, one. In between Jupiter and Mars's orbit. Next question. Where is the Kuiper belt? A, well, okay, you guys read. 
Uh, Naveen, uh, Naveen, have you just typed in a new answer? Uh, one of the Jupiter's ring? Um, no, it's not. Uh, please type your answer in the thing. So, um, Arun, Arnav, and Deepa. After you, the. Uh, no, nobody say it. Nobody say it. Nobody say it. Please type your answer in the thing. In between Uranus and Neptune's orbit. Um. So whoever said option A, please check your answer again. Shitij, unfortunate. Oh, Shitij, your second answer is correct. Naveen, your second answer is correct. Arin, Arnav, and Ditya, you three are correct. And uh, everyone, please refrain from shouting the answer out. Priya, please check again. Manishika, you are correct. Um, Priya, please check again. It's not. It's not B. Priya, uh, Parnika, it's not B either. No, I'll I'll give that away. Okay, so ten, nine, eight, not C, six, five, three, two. I'm getting bored. It's after Neptune's orbit. Next question. Kuiper Belt objects have another name. What is it? You guys need to type it into a private chat. Um, Shitij, please try again. It's not the correct answer. No. Um, Ditya, please check again. Um, Nishka, you are on the right track. Shitij, no, sadly. Um, please try again. They have a very specific name. They are what you said they are, but that's not their name per se. That's a classification, if you will. That's just a gen that's just a generic way of put. Um, Arnav, what does K O B uh, what does that stand for? Yeah. Um, Arnav, that's well try again. It's not exactly correct either way. Yes, Parnika, you are correct. Nishka, you are on the right track. So I'll give you guys a hint. They are after Neptune. That's your hint. They are after Neptune. Um, uh, Shitij, please try again. That's, again, a classification. Um, who is... Google your... No... Uh, Okay, so Ditya, please try again. Arnav, please try again. Uh, Google, please try again. Um, um, Quarantine <laughs> logic, <laughs> please, no jokes. Arun, please try again. Um, okay, could, okay, so there's a person here named Google. Could you please tell me your real name in the voice? I, I, I can't keep going with Google forever. Arnav, please try again. I'm going to reveal the answer shortly. Three, two, one. They are trans Neptunian objects. Trans is beyond, um, and they're beyond Neptune. That's, that's the hint. Question nine What is the Oort, Oort cloud? Oh, and uh, before before everyone answers, so there is a person in the in the call called Google. Could you please tell me your real name? Uh, Shiti, you are correct. Is... Okay, thank you, Quarantine Learning, for the info. Um, so, Shitij, you are correct. Ditya, you are correct. 
Um, Arnav, you are correct. Naveen, please try again. Ditya, yeah, you're correct. And Pranika, you're connect. correct. Um, Nikki and Shivi, can you guys hear me? Naveen, please try again. Uh, Arin, please try again. Yes, Naveen, that is the correct answer. Okay, so Arin, uh, please try again. That's not the um, correct answer. So, yes, Nishika, that is the correct answer. Okay, and uh, Aaron, please try again. But in three, two, one. A, they are theoretical region. It's a theoretical region. We don't yeah. know for certain whether or not it exists, but we have evidence to say that it yeah. does. This background image, that's just one of the pieces of evidence. The blue circles highlight an object that is moving in a certain area or just a multitude of objects that are too close together. Okay. So last question. This one is a bit cheeky, but so type your let, your letter answer in the private chat and your definition of a light year in the same private chat to me. But what is an astronomical unit and a light year? Um, Arnav, please try again. That's uh, that's the number of um, oh, units in a light year. I need the definition of a light year. Naveen, please. Oh, sorry, uh, Naveen, you are correct. Arun, please try again. Arnav, I need to uh, choose one of the options. Um, choose A, B, C, or D. Aditya, uh, please try again. Shitij, you are correct. Um, and everyone, type your definition of a light year in a private chat to me. I will not accept 100,000 AU. Um, Ditya, please try again. Um, Arin, that is the correct answer. Ditya, that is the correct answer. Parnika, that is the correct answer. Now, to everyone who's given me the correct letter choice, can you try and type in your definition of uh, Nikki Shivi? Good job, both of you. Have, that is the correct answer. Um, yes, Shitids, that is the correct definition. Arnav, that is the correct choice, but what is your definition of a light year? Yeah, I'm giving it. Yeah, no problem, just. Um, Dithya, if is that your definition of a light year? Uh, uh, Arin, I will. Uh, Arin, while you are technically correct, that's not an answer I will be accepting. I need the definition of a light year without the reference of AU. So, Dithya, I don't understand your answer. Is that an answer of um light year? Yeah. Uh, tr I mean, while you're not wrong per se, do you know exactly how long? Parnika, you are correct. So in a private chat, type your type that to me. Uh, Arin, I need, I can't accept a reference to astronomical unit. Okay. I will be revealing the answers. Um, Naveen. Um, uh, Can you just wait for five seconds, seconds more? I'll wait to 20 seconds more. Naveen, please try again. But uh, speed of. Oh. 
that technically can't be measured. I'll just put it that way, Naveen. Ditya, you are correct. Arin, the, um, you need to elaborate on that. Uh, Daran, that is incorrect. And also please type your answer in a private chat. Um, Arin, that's still not elaborated enough. So I will not be accepting the answer in three, two, one, answer one second. is, sorry, but now I can't change it. But yeah, so the answer is D, one astronomical unit is the distance between the earth and the sun. And one light year is, yeah, um, it is a length used to measure astronomical distances, but the length itself is the distance light travels in a year. That's about a hundred thousand times the distance between Earth and Sun. Okay, so now that is those are all the questions. So can everyone type their names in a private in a pub in the public chat so I can take your attendance? One second. Katta, I would. Charlie, Um, okay, so, um, okay, so that's it. I've taken everyone's attendance. Did everyone enjoy the class just before I end it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I hope.